Hey guys, it's Jade from Theme Girl, bringing you another video for the Creative Column series. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the steps and how to add the creative borders around columns like what you see right now. And also, I'm gonna cover the CSS way to animate the borders around it when you hover to the column. So without further ado, let's jump into the builder and get started. So we're now here in our builder, and before we start working on the borders, let's quickly go over the elements and the setup that we have right now. So I have a section out here with a row that has two columns in it. And in the columns, I just added some basic elements, the headline, text, and a button elements. And here I have the image elements. I have set up some styling based on the settings available for these elements out here. So since we will just be creating that borders in one column for now, we're going to add them in the element CSS that will be found in the column settings. So let's get started in doing that. Let's now create the first border to our column. For this setup, we will be using purely CSS to add those borders. And we're going to use the element CSS that will be added to our column to add those border frames. So let's add a first one. So let's go to the column settings, customize an element CSS. And let's start writing our CSS code. We're going to make use of the before and after pseudo elements that we have used in the previous creative column videos that we have covered. So we're going to have the content. Then let's set the width to 100%, the height to 100% as well. Then let's make sure that it will be displayed block. And as so what you can see, it was pushed down because we have set it to block. And let's set the positioning to absolute. There you go. We still kind of see it, so let's try adding a background color to this. And let's copy this background. Nice. Okay, so doing that, you could see that the yellow box is actually filling the entire content because that is the dimension of our column. So our goal now he here is we have to set the background color of this div to transparent and actually just put the solid color, which is in this case a yellow color, as the border. So let's set this to transparent. Then border, trans 8 pixels, solid, and the yellow color. So there you have it. And let's play with the width and height values. For the width, let's just say we're going to have 80% um, and then the height is also 80%. So what I keep typing. 800, so maybe increase the height to around 90. And then let's nudge the border box higher. So we could put top to negative 20. Uh, let's do a bit more. 50, 60, maybe 65. So that's it. We now have our first border box around it. Let's now add the second one. We've used the before pseudo selector. Now we're going to use the after pseudo selector. So let's put dollar el then after and actually we could just copy and paste the codes here but the difference is 
we're gonna set the background color to the solid color that we have and then remove the border and then we're gonna play around the values of the positioning which is the top let's try to say this is gonna be bottom and we will need to push this to the right so let's put in right let's say zero let's close that This looks a bit too far, so let's try to make this 20 pixels and then adjust the width because it comes too close to the edge. Maybe like 60 or 70. 75. And then bottom from 65, let's say this is just 35 or 45. We now have our borders around our column, so let's work on adding the transition effect to this border so when we hover our columns, these boxes will get displaced. So to do that, we're going to target the column first, and when it gets hovered, the pseudo element will take all the properties we'll put in this block. So what we're going to adjust is simply the top and left values so currently the top area should just be here but then we pushed it up so we put in negative 65 pixels so what we want to do right now is kind of displace it closer to the inner area so we just have to decrease the value of our uh, top property so for that let's put in top maybe lessen it by 20 pixels so we get negative 45 pixels and we could preview that it's a good value and then the left currently the left is set to zero and i want it to go closer to the image so we're gonna have to put in a positive value so that it will go to the right so left that would be maybe 15 pixels or let's put in 20 okay that should be enough and right now it's kind of harsh the hover animation because we didn't put any transition property yet to our initial state of our pseudo element so what we're gonna do is put in transition then the property that we will animate let's set all then the duration, let's put in 0 0.8 seconds. And then the timing function, so let's put in ease and out. So when you hover it, the transition is now smoother and not the harsh displacement of this box. Now let's work on the second box which is the after pseudo element so let's put an el over then after the same as the previous one we just have to play with the bottom and the right um, property values to kind of displace the um, second box so from bottom the zero value should just be here and that will be covered by the image so we can just decrease the bottom value from negative 45 to maybe around 25 that's too much so maybe 30 will be okay okay 30 and then the right is it is currently pushed to 20 pixels from the right pushing it to the left so let's increase that to maybe 10 more pixels that would be 30 pixels maybe a bit more 35 oh, let's make it 40. okay that's a good volume and for it to have this smooth transition effect we can just copy this line of code then put it in the after 
pseudo element. Now, when we hover to our column, the boxes get, get animated. And you can do more animation for this. Uh, you could try the before using the transform property and rotate, rotate it to maybe 20 degrees and it will rotate. So, and you could do all that, but for now, we will just settle with the top, left, bottom, and right values. But just know that that is possible as well. And yeah, that's it. So with this few lines of code that we have added to our element CSS, we're able to have this creative column effect to our column.